so uh, once you have your SDK window launched click on file then new and then new application project so let's name it SDK DMA uh, your OS platform would be standalone and your hardware platform is this which is, which is basically the block design that you have created just now and processor you are using the core 0 of your ARM processor and which is in your C language your application would be in C language and new board support package will be created click on next and select hello world application so uh, this will create these two folders SDK DMA and SDK DMA BSP so here you can see if we expand this BSP folder and then your processor part and then lib src you have an additional axi dma ip uh, uh, axi dma folder as well so this contains the uh, all the driver files that you actually require to uh, access any variable or any information for your axi uh, dma block that you have uh, added so this is here so we'll open the hello world c file in which we'll write the code so um, I'll increase the font size. Show line number. So for the code part, I'll just uh, copy paste from here. So now we will go line by line for this code to understand what we are doing now here. So, so first we have some include files, your simple input output and one for the boolean function. So now you have included your uh, AXI DMA header file as well and your x parameters .h file where we have all the device IDs and the base addresses and high addresses and all those kind of information for all the blocks in your block design. Then we have defined a macro p4 depth which basically tells the number of uh, data, uh, data transfers that we will be doing. So this is kept as 128 here. And then uh, from this x exi dma.h header file, if you right click on it and then select open declaration, here you can see um, if you scroll down, then you can see that you have a struct defined of x exi dma. So this struct consists of information which is like the base address of your DMA and whether or not it has transmit and receive channels which are used for accessing the DMA, whether or not it is configured for use in scatter gather mode and for the number of channels that uh, we have for this DMA. So all those kind of information is provided in the AXI DMA. So this instance we have created here which we will be initializing. So one thing that you need to know here is that uh, your DMA has a particular device ID. So device ID is just like a number uh, assigned to the DMA block by your PS so that we can directly access it, uh, access this DMA using this ID itself. So this ID is defined in this parameters file, x parameters .h header file. So here you can see, yeah, this is zero is the device ID for your DMA here. So we will be using this ID for initializing your AXI DMA instance. So, uh, so we have written this function init DMA initializing DMA to initialize this uh, AXI DMA variable. So first thing is we uh, declare a variable AXI DMA config. So you can see it from here itself that uh, this is also again a struct which has the information parameters like the device ID, the base address and whether or not it has MM2S channels or scatter gather mode and all those kinds of information. So that all is, uh, so that all is contained in this particular struct. So first thing is what we will do is we will uh, extract the configuration for our particular DMA that we have added in the block design. So uh, first we will extract the configuration settings for that particular DMA using this AXI DMA lookup configuration. So this is defined here 
in uh, uh, in this particular file so it just receives the dma id as its input and returns the configuration pointer uh, the configuration struct for your axi dml so we use this function to extract the configuration settings and then we initialize our this dma instance axi dma using this uh, all these configuration settings using this function axi dma configuration and uh, initialize so this is also defined here so it receives these to the axi dma instance and your configuration values and initializes your instance with all the all these parameters here so this was the second step then third is uh, you have to check whether or your whether your dm is configured for scatter gather mode or not so if it is for scatter gather then uh, your uh, then you will have to return uh, an error message and it will exit the code automatically so for initializing the dma we do three steps first one is that we uh, define an instance of exit dma second is we uh, check for the configuration settings for uh, the particular instance that we have created of our dma then we initialize this this dma instance using the configuration settings that we extracted here in the configuration pointer variable then we check whether or not our dm is configured for scatter gather mode if so then we return an error message the second function that we have defined here is the check idle function so uh, since we are not using the interrupt mode of dma we will just check whether my dma transaction buses are idle or are they uh, busy so for that we have uh, used this we have defined this check idle function so what it does is first of all uh, your dma instance so your dma instance has some registers defined in it so those registers correspond to a particular dma transaction channel whether it is s2mm or mm2s so uh, those registers actually store the values which indicate whether your uh, that particular dma bus is uh, is busy or is it in halted state or is it idle so the possible values for those registers is defined here in this file uh, yeah so if if my register value is 2 then that means that my that particular dma bus is idle if its value is 1 that it means that my that particular dma bus is in halted state so these values are defined here in this uh, exi dma hardware dot h file so what we are doing in this in this function is we read the we read the register values of that dma for that we provide the base address of my dma and the offset which means uh, the uh, number of uh, address locations up from the base address from which i want to read my uh, register value so this offset value will decide whether you are uh, checking the status for your uh, the uh, mm2s channel or s2mm channel so this read register function is defined here so uh, this base address and the offset are the only two inputs that it receives so uh, it extracts the uh, it accepts the value of the register and adds it with the idle mask so if my status value is 2 uh, 2 is the value of my uh, so so 2 is the value of my idle mask so if my status value is 2 then that means that my uh, that particular dma channel is uh, idle if it's 1 then it means that it is halted if it is 0 then it means that it is uh, it is busy so uh, here we have defined that uh, for offset value of hexadecimal 4 uh, indicates the uh, status for dma to device which is actually the p4 So, so 0x4 is for DMA to FIFO transaction channel, and 0x34 is to check for your FIFO to DMA channel. Okay, so yeah, it should be idle here. Okay. So uh, now we define the main function. So first thing that we need to do is that we initialize our DMA. So for that we simply call our init DMA function. and check whether the initialization is successful or not then second we define two array variables tx pointer which is uh, an array to store the data which will be transmitted from ddr to the p4 via uh, dma and rx pointer is the array in which the data that we read from the uh, from the p4 via dma that data will be stored in this array 
then we have this initialized a boolean error flag here so this variable will just be used to check whether my transmitted data and received data are same or not so first thing is that we initialize my uh, uh, so first thing is that I initialize my data that I ne that need to be transmitted. So that is simply defined here as a multiple of two. And next thing we have done is that we have uh, used this d cache flush range function. So what it does is so for the address that we have passed here for the tx pointer and rx pointer, it basically uh, writes back these arrays from cache to the DDM memory. So these, these function calls here are just to make sure that my uh, transmitted data array and received data array are stored in the DDR memory. So for that I provide the, uh, the address pointer of my transmitted data and the received data. So for that we have I have typecasted it into the pointer data type. The second argument is the total size of data in terms of bytes. So since FIFO depth is the uh, indicates the number of integer data transfers, so we have multiplied it with the size of int, so it will return the total size in bytes, and then we have passed it as the second argument here. Then we will initiate the data transfer first from DDR to FIFO. So for that we use a simple function call x exidma simple transfer. So this function is defined here in the C file. So it receives first input as the instance of your AXI DMA which will be used to transfer the data. The second is the address of the data which needs to be transmitted. The third is the total length of the data in terms of bytes. And the fourth is the direction of data transaction whether it is from FIFO to DMA or DMA to FIFO. So these four are the uh, arg input arguments for this uh, AXI DMA simple transfer function. So that we have defined here. So first I pass my instance, then my transmitted address, transmitted data address, then my FIFO depth into size of int, and first my uh, uh, direction from DMA to FIFO. So if my this uh, transfer is successful, then we move forward, otherwise it will print an error message. Similar thing we need to do for reading the data back from FIFO via DMA. The only thing that will change is the uh, address of your uh, received data which is Rx pointer and then your direction of data transaction which is from your device to DMA that is your FIFO to DMA. So these two function calls here are used to transfer the data firstly from DDR to FIFO and second then reading from FIFO to DDR. So if either of this transaction fails then we print the error message. So in between we are also checking the uh, idle in between we are also checking the status of both the uh, DMA buses the device to DMA and DMA to device that will analyze uh, after the results appear. So after both these transactions we check for uh, whether my both the buses are idle that is my transactions are complete or not. So we wait until my status variable extracted here using the check idle function. So we wait until my status variable uh, value returned is 2 firstly for the DMA to device channel and then for your device to DMA channel. So in main function what we have done is we just initialize the DMA. We declare the two arrays for the transmitted data and the received data. We initialize the input data. Then we made sure that my uh, the transmitted and the data read from FIFO are stored in the DDM memory by using this uh, cache flush range function. Then we perform the data transfer first from DDR to FIFO using AXIDMA simple transfer function. In this we pass the AXIDMA instance, my transmitted address, my total uh, length of data transfer and the direction. Then similar call is made to read the data again from FIFO but only the receive address data is changed and the direction of data transaction is changed. And then I'm checking whether both the transactions are complete or not by using these two while loops here. So until my check idle function returns a value of two, which means that my bus is idle, I will wait. And once that is done, we, uh, so uh, we then check whether my transmitted data is equal to the received data or not. So for that we have used a for loop uh, which runs for FIFO depth iterations and we check for every variable for every data from the transmitted array and the received date and the received array. So at any point when these are unequal, I assert my error flag and exit the loop. So if my error flag value is 1 then I print the message that data mismatch is found. So uh
here it should be j and dx pointer so anytime mismatch is found i paint the location of the mismatch and the transmitted actual transmitted value and the received value otherwise uh, the uh, message of successful dma transaction is printed so once this is done So uh, once this is one, we change the system dot MSS BSP settings to configure for uh, the JTAG terminal rather than a UART for standard in and standard output. So this is the same that we have done in the previous lab. And then we, after the BSP sources are generated, then we add an additional hardware server. So for lab ten, then this. Use the IP that is provided for your lab. Uh, then test the connection. If successful, then click on OK. Then uh, right click on your SDK project from debugger. Select debug configurations. Then double click on your system debugger. So here you have this uh, standalone type debug and your block design hardware platform. You have your bitstream file also that we generated. So uh, check this reset entire system. So it will automatically check your program FPG option. So it will automatically upload this this one bitstream uh, while debugging. So click on apply and then debug. So once your debugger is launched, you will see the list of all the variables here in the variable section. So uh, now go to the XSCT console and type JTAG terminal. So and then click on run. Yeah, uh, there is a breakpoint added at this point, so it stopped here. So click on run again to complete the execution. And as you can see that the DMA uh, has completed all the transactions successfully.